Sometimes it's useful to have a number which has lots of factors. Like the number 12, which can be divided by 2 and 3 and 4 and 6 and, and 12 itself. We find these things useful sometimes. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato, ah, he thought the best choice for something like this was the number 5040. He thought this was the best choice because it had loads of divisors. Lots of factors. So one divides into it, obviously. Two, divide. Three, four, five, six, seven, divide. Eight, divide. Nine, divide. Ten, divide. So all the numbers up to ten, divide. Twelve divides into it as well. And it's got 60 divisors altogether. So Plato was thinking this is the best number you could have for, like, say, a city. If you had a, the population of a city was 5,040, you could divide that up into all kinds of different groups. If you wanted to divide up the land, then you would divide it up into units of 5,040. 5,040, lots of divisors, plus it has more divisors than all the numbers less than 5,040. We now call this a highly composite number. It's like an anti-prime. It's like, yeah, it's like an anti-prime. Okay, yeah, it's the most divisible number. Lots of divisors. Uh, in fact, the first guy who really properly studied this was uh, the famous Indian mathematician Ramanujan. He did it about 100 years ago. Uh, let's take a look at properties of highly composite numbers. Anti-prime numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to catch on, Brady. I think you're 100 years too late for that. So the definition of a highly composite number is one that has more divisors, factors if you want to call it factors, more divisors than any number smaller than it. Uh, let's, let's just run through the numbers and let's find some. So these are like, these are always like the previous title holders. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how many divisors for one? It's just one. So two, it's a prime. So like primes do, um, the only things that divide primes are one and itself. It has two divisors. So primes have two divisors. So three would be the same. It has two divisors. Four. Now four is going to be different. It can divide by one, uh, two and four. So it has three divisors. And hey, this has more divisors than the others before it. So now, this is the current winner. This is the highly composite number so far. Uh, let's see what five does. Well, five's a prime, uh, so five loses. All right, way down there, so two. Four is still the title holder. Yeah, four is still winning, but then six comes along, and oh dear, six. It can be divided by one, two, three, and six. Four divisors. And now six is ahead of the game. We keep going. Oh, seven. Ah, no, seven's no good. It's a prime. It has two divisors. Eight. Uh, does eight do any better? So we can divide by one, two, four, uh, eight, uh, four divisors. Uh, it's not better than six then. So four divisors. No, it hasn't won anything. Uh, nine has three divisors. So it's uh, one, three, and nine. Ten has four divisors. 11, prime, two divisors. 12 has six divisors. Because I, I told you, 12 is one of these numbers that have lots of things that divide into it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So that has six divisors. 12 is really good, really up there, and then oh, so on. So then, yeah, well, let's have a look at the title holders then. Okay, highly composite numbers. Let's write out the sequence. One, you're correct. One is there. Two is there. 4, 6, 12, and then if you carry on, 24, 36, 48, 60. 60 is a good number. That's why we have 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds. 120, 180, 240. 360 is there, like degrees in a circle. Lots of things divide into 360. It's a good number to do. 720 and 840 and so on. All right, and they carry on like that. So these are, this is our sequence of highly composite numbers. There's a very important theorem in maths called the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. If you want its fancy name, it means all positive whole numbers can be written as a product of primes. By multiplying prime numbers together, this is why primes are important. There are building blocks for other numbers. There are atoms for other numbers. So all other numbers can be written like this, if you had a number, you'd have 
you'd have primes. Let's just call them prime one to a power, prime two to some power, prime three to some power, and that would go up. And then it would end at some point. You'd have the last prime here, prime k to some power. Let's do an example. So if you had the number 30, it's built up from primes. It's 2 times 3 times 5. Primes that divide 30 has to be either 2, 3, or 5, 7. Doesn't divide. Yeah, so if I, had, if I do another example, if I had 550, it'd be 2 times 5 squared times 11. 3 doesn't divide into it, 7 doesn't divide into it, 19 cannot divide into this number. Uh, and now if you want to do, if you want to look at the factors, uh, you just, just use that idea repeatedly. So the factors are the primes that divide into it repeatedly. Uh, so I could divide this by 25, because I can divide by 5 and then 5 again. Or if I want to divide by 10, I can divide it by 2 and then divide by 5. So the factors are just all the possible combinations or permutations of these prime atoms that you've been given to work with. Uh, it, they would all look like this. All the factors would look like this. It'd be the same primes. So it'd be your P1 and P2 and P3 up to PK. You would have powers here. Let's call them B1 and B2 and B3. Uh, just these powers would be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or up to and including the, the final thing. So anything less than what I've called A up here. Now those are your factors. So how many factors are there? Just to show you how many factors there are then. The factors of a number, let's call it N, or the divisors of N is, um, well, how many choices do I get for these powers? And it's this. Uh, it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, anything up to A1. So it'd be uh, a1 plus 1 multiplied by how many choices for this second prime power? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, anything up to a2. Uh, that's uh, 1 plus a2 choices. You just do the same thing for each of these prime powers. So that would go up to the last one, which is ak plus 1. And that's how many divisors there are. I'll do an example with these, shall I? So if I do uh, 30, if I looked for the divisors of 30, I can use this little formula, but look, all the powers are just one. How many choices would I have for each of these powers? There's two choices there. Two for that one, two for that one. So all the powers are one. Uh, and this is going to be two times two times two, which is eight. And there are eight divisors of 30. Uh, and if I did it for 550, slightly different because I've got this square in it. Uh, so... How many choices here for the first prime power? There's two, and so I would have 12 uh, factors of 550. So we've seen how to work out divisors. Um, we should just check 5040. It's meant to be great, 5040. Let's see how many divisors that has. Uh, if you broke it down into primes then, it's going to look like this. It's uh, two to the power four, multiplied by three squared, multiplied by five, multiplied by 7. Uh, so let's look at that uh, divisor formula. So we want divisors of 5040. Uh, we can use the powers to help us work that out. So it's going to be 5 by 3 by 2 by 2. Well, and that's going to be 60. So there are 60 divisors of 5040 which is greater than the number smaller than 5040. That makes it highly composite. A hundred years ago, Ramanujan started studying these and he noticed three properties that highly composite numbers have to have, uh, which I'll, I'll show you now. Uh, they're not too difficult to understand. The first property is the primes of the factorization of our highly composite number have to be uh, consecutive primes. I mean, look, that's what happened here. If you look at 5040, uh, they were, they were consecutive primes. They were two, three, five and seven. Now if you look at 550, just to compare it with something where it doesn't work, uh, that wasn't consecutive primes. Uh, that was uh, two by five squared by 11. Now I know that this is not a highly composite number because I could replace this 11 for one of the missing primes. I could replace it for seven and it would be a smaller number but with the same number of divisors, same number of factors, so it's not going to be highly composite. Or the best choice would be if I picked a number which had consecutive primes. So if I picked 
I'm going to use the same powers though, like they are there. So I'm going to use this. 2 by 3 squared by 5. Yeah, that's better. That has consecutive primes. It's a much smaller number. It's 90. But 90, we can see, has the same number of divisors as 550. So this is a much better choice than 550. So it failed. So yes, if you've got a highly composite number, the primes are consecutive. That's, that's kind of nice. The second thing Ramanujan noticed is the uh, powers in their prime factorization. They have to be weakly decreasing. They have to be going down like this. So you can see it here with 540. Look, 4, 2, 1, and 1. So they're going weakly down, so they're not increasing. Uh, but it didn't happen here with my 550. It didn't happen here with my 90 either. I tell you why, because I could make a better choice. If I swapped the powers around, and if I put them in a decreasing order, it would look like this. I could have a 2 squared multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. So it's the same powers, but in a decreasing order, that makes the number smaller. Uh, so why is that? That's 60. So now you've got 60 there. It has the same number of divisors. And hey, this is a much better choice than 90. And in fact, 60 there is a highly composite number. Uh, the third thing Ramanujan noticed was these highly composite numbers uh, all end with, uh, with 1 as the last power. So they always end up with a single prime there at the end. Uh, so it doesn't end with a, a square at the end. There's actually a couple of exceptions for that. There are two exceptions. These are highly composite numbers that break that rule. 4 is a highly composite number, and that's 2 squared. And the other number is uh, 36, which is uh, 2 squared by 3 squared. What Ramanujan showed is that highly composite numbers have to end with a prime that has a power 1 or 2. Uh, 2 has these two exceptions here, and everything else, they all end with a 1. Uh, with their prime power at the end. Uh, that's less obvious. Less obvious than the other facts I showed you. That took some while to prove. Uh, but it's another necessary condition for a highly composite number. In addition to our usual supporters, we'd like to thank Audible.com for supporting this video. If you have to cover a few miles in planes or trains or automobiles, one of the best ways to pass the time is listening to audiobooks. So while you watch me driving here from Bristol to Nottingham, let me tell you about Audible.com. They've got a huge range of titles, a great app, and a good offer for new customers. But before I tell you about that, first a recommendation, and I'm going to suggest Airframe by Michael Crichton. It deals with a topic I always find fascinating, that is air crash investigations. Maybe not one to listen to on a plane if you're a nervous flyer, but definitely worth your time. Now Audible are offering a free 30-day trial of their service, which includes your first book, if you go to audible.com slash number file. Using that URL will mean they know you came from here. That address again, audible.com slash number file for the free trial. I use Audible. I think they're well worth a look. And I'd like to thank them again for supporting this number file video. Makes now, it very anti-prime. Stop trying to make anti-prime a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop trying to make fetch a thing. <laughs>